So as soon as I've got here, I've seen a bit of prey. It's the other side of the reeds, but I think I've got some good photos already. I'm just trying to keep an eye on it because they disappear so quickly. Ah, this is exciting because you usually don't find them much straight away. It's really far away. I can just about see it. I'll try and get some video as well. Where is it gone? There it is. It's really far away. This is using the 1.4 teleconverter. So you can see how far away it is. Try and get my shutter speed down to crop in. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and get closer because I'm too far away. It's in those trees over there. Oh, it was. Yeah, it's still there. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, I'm still too far away. So it could be a kestrel. So wait, it's just floated. Trying to get it again. It's really hard to find focus in. I'm not sure what it is. Can't see it yet. I've got some good footage. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. Got some really good fairies there. Unexpected. I don't see many birds of prey here when I first get here. I'm really happy with this. Even with, I think it's my ability, but this is a 560 with a teleconverter. And I really struggle to find focus. But once you do, it's great because you've got, obviously, much. the subject is much bigger in the frame. And that's what you want, especially with a 400 nature, natively. But let's see what we can do. Okay, so I haven't seen anything for about five minutes now. But I'm still waiting for those hobbies or bobbies, whatever they're called. But I can't believe, I think, looking at it, it looks like a Kestrel. Yeah, the teleconverter is, I find it really hard to find, to track birds, because they're moving so fast, obviously. And I kind of sight it, so I look up and then kind of sight it like that, but it's still really hard. I should maybe take off the teleconverter for a better field of view, for a wider field of view. But I just feel the teleconverter gives me that slightly better edge when something's really far away, which birds always are. So maybe it's worth that pursuit to get them in this frame, and when I do, it'd be better, instead of just cropping in really harshly. But the Z8's really good at that too. That was a bobby, bobby hobby. But I just lose it, so, they're so fast and they're so low. I might take off my converter, just... Jeez. If I do get one, I've got a plane. I'm not sure that really counts. I can't even fight the plane in here. I think because the, the focus throw is always the wrong end. So maybe if I should start with... with should I start at infinity? Or should I start at closest focal range? And then... I'm not sure. This is fun. I'm glad you're here for the experience. I don't usually get such an adrenaline rush so early on to find a bird of prey. I can't actually remember the last time I've found a bird of prey here. So it's probably a good time to talk about my, why I come out here and to woods and wildlife parks. I think it does tap into modern life. Got you, got you, got you, I got you. I think I've got you. I've got something, it's very backlit. Oh, the sun's coming out. I don't know if that's going to help or not. Got you, got you. 400 is better field of view for this little fella, this little hobby. Let's have a look, see what it is. I don't know what it is. I think it is a hobby. I don't actually know. It looks beautiful, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, 1600 is a second is great. Okay, I've got it. But very small in the frame, but I don't dare put the, the teleconverter on because I just won't be able to find it. But like I was saying, 
technology is amazing now. You know, with our mobile phones and computers, we've got all the information and knowledge and false knowledge. You know, we could easily spend all day on our phones and we're addicted to that kind of fix. I'm going to see my friends or my family and you know, we're watching the TV or something we want to watch, like a sports or something. And most of the time, we're all on our phones at this, doing and watching it. On our phones, checking whatever. There's so much to check, isn't there? Uh, working on marketing, social media, and then editing my weddings or wildlife or YouTube videos or anything else. I could easily spend all day on the computer and my phone and it goes so quickly. And I, I'm not very good at sitting for too long on, at anything on the computer or my phone. I just don't feel we're built for that. We're not meant to be sitting down looking at screens all day. It makes me feel physically not very nice and mentally, of course, it's just as bad. And luckily, uh, luckily I live quite close to a small park and... Oh, the sun's come out. Amazing. I live next to a small park and wood, which is I can walk down, I can go there daily if I feel like it, and which I sometimes do. And I also live near nature reserves like this, which is great, fantastic. I have no agenda, or no, I have no want to be on my phone or look at my phone. And so I do photography at the same time, of course. I, I always take this, my 400 lens with me, and my Z8, and it's so light and portable. I could just carry it handheld like this all day. I have no trouble. It's a pleasure. And sure, a lot of times I don't get any results. I take photos, but you know, it's, it's quite difficult wildlife photography. There's a lot of variables. A lot of it's down to me as well. But sometimes I get back and just look at them and just delete the whole lot. Don't even bother putting them on computer. What is that? That's a new one. Found another one of those hobbies, I think. It's got closer this time. Yes, yes. Gotcha. Beautiful, you've got clouds behind you and all sorts. I'll switch to video just because. I want to get some on video too. I've got you. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is strange. I sometimes tell me I don't get anything or to see anything apart from goose or geese. This is fantastic. I'm glad you're here for the ride. And since I've been doing wildlife photography properly, back in November, it's been winter. It's been really dark. And it's been really hard to get good results even with my 400 4.5. The light's been dim, and there hasn't been much life around. So this is going into spring and summer now, I'm really excited for that. Okay, I think it's time to find somewhere else, even though I've been enjoying getting those hobbies. Let's see what else we can find. Hello, rabbit. How are you doing? So the autofocus isn't great always when you're going from near to far. But when you're going to near to far like that, it's really tricky. I like to focus on the bench before the bird to try and find it. And uh, that's something I've got to, it's probably user error. Maybe I should have it on infinity or nearest focus first. I'm not too sure. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh. So they yeah. are often, it's sometimes in the evening if you drive out, they'll be sitting on the poles along the, they'll be oh, sitting right. on the poles by, along by the, the road, drive, yeah. just up oh, along right. the driveway. But they also hang out, you know where the osprey pole? Yeah, is? right in over the other side of the yeah, reeds. So if you go yeah. up to the far hide, yeah. the jury hide, and look out towards the osprey. Right. You can often see them and over there the as well. Up there. Well, the sun's come out today as well. Beautiful, isn't it? Much overdue. Yes. <laughs> you need some, don't we? Yeah. Thank you. 
And I should have my lens hood on now to get rid of the sun glare, but sun glare isn't actually that bad. With the coatings of the lenses, it's less prominent. Click, and it's a clap because my road mic on board of the ZF has died, the battery's died, user error. And there's a lot of things to think about with all these cameras now, there's so many options, which is great, but also makes it more complicated and more margin for error, maybe. But I just wanted to show you this patch because a few weeks ago, when I was trying the 1.4 TC, it was raining, really bad weather, hailing storm, and there was two pheasants just on this hill, and I was really far away, and got some really atmospheric photos, and I'm really happy with them, but again, it was really harsh conditions, and not something I'd print out, but it was really fun. Sometimes that bad weather does make some nice photos, I think. Oh! Oh, it's just a duck, I think, but... Oh, maybe. Not sure what it was. <laughs> another one to collection. I'm not sure what it was, to be honest. But there you go, another one to the gallery. And that's what kind of I, I do. I I have a best of. So I tried to get one of each species of birds. And I know there's a whole endless amount of birds, species, but I try and get the best one and have a best of catalogue. It's a great hobby to have, to try and have all that collection. And then, oops, oh, Hopefully I'll try and print them out at some point, my favourite ones, and collection on my wall. That's amazing though, I mean it's such adrenaline rush to try and capture birds, especially small ones and fast ones, and the rarer the better for me to get my, to get my fix. But like I said, if I don't get one, then that's okay, because the whole experience of this is just, it's so calming. And it feels unnatural to be on the computer and with phones all day. So it's good back to get back to nature and something we're more naturally inclined to be around, I think. So I've moved to this side of the reeds because the sun's coming from that way in and if I was over there, you're going to be backlit, which is terrible. But this is um, much better, the sun's out shoot a high frame, faster shoot speed, higher aperture, and hope for the best. I was watching uh, Morton Hilmer videos, and he's, he's, I'm sure you've heard of him already, he's probably the leading wildlife YouTuber. And they're about an hour long each, which this video won't be. But he doesn't talk about gear so much, but he is a Nikon user. He has the best lenses and he uses the 180-600 to quite a lot, he says, because the other lenses are too heavy and the differences are marginal. He says, of course, the other, I just heard another bird, lenses are better, but they're not as practical. He doesn't seem to care about depth of field either, he's more about... Just seen another bird of prey way over there, it's huge. Gotta be a buzzard. Looks like a buzzard. Not sure. I might try and go over there. DX mode. Let's get closer. Switch down to a thousandths maybe. I'm actually coming this way. Come on. Come on. Switch to FX mode because it's actually coming this way. Ah! Oh my god, it's flying straight over me. Oh, I've just got to give it one of the sun. Switch to video. Oh, no, it's too good. I don't want. To... Oh my god. Get some video just to show you what. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Oh my god, it's right over me. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a buzzard. 
Um, I don't know, yeah, I think it was a buzzard. I've got them before, but to have it, because it was really far away, I was in, using the teleconverter in DX mode, I was like, okay, but you know, it's just, just, just nice to capture it. But to get it, <laughs> and it comes this way, and the sun, you can see, you've probably seen the examples, when the sun, and it bends its wings like that, so you get the sun on across its whole wings. I hope I've got a photo of that and not just video. <sighs> you know, what, what more can you want from that? Sensational. I tell you, this is just a treat today. Is it because I bought the camera? I'm not sure. Wow. Okay, I might try and find that buzzard. But I'm very much a person when the sun's out. When I wake up in the morning and the sun's out, I'm automatically jumping out of bed. And I'm just in a great mood and ready to start the day, whether it's doing work on my computer or coming out. <laughs> I love the noises. I'll tell you what, I've never... I've been here many times and got nothing. But it's not important if I do or I don't. So this is the type of wildlife photography I like to do, is to wander around. If you hear something or see something, just stay in the same area. I'm not one to go and hide so much and do the setups. I've got nothing against that. I mean, enables you to get good photos and it feeds the bird, no problem. No one gets hurt, no animals are harmed. I Me, mean, it's just wandering around, I like to move. I'm sitting down on my computer all day, so. I think that's a black bird. I'm not sure though. So it's a generational thing now where the young adults are born into technology, so they've done nothing else but mobile phones and being on the screens. It's more likely to for young people to be trendy to go out into nature and to climb mountains and hike than it is to, um, to go to clubs. I mean, I see it in the news, more clubs and pubs are closing than ever before. Because, well, people can't afford it. As you know, everything's gone up really expensive. And I think that is a direct result of technology being in our lives. We're all kind of addicted. The polar opposite is to go out into nature and wildlife, which is free, usually. The more I'm on the phone and my screens, the more I want to come out and do things like this. Ah, ow! Flipping egg. Tales from the Wild. That's actually a really good name. That could be the name of this video. Tales from the Wild. So yeah, all the photos and video you see in this video has just been from this trip. Obviously I've got a whole bank of photos, like I've said, and but I just want you to experience it as much closely as you can from just this trip. And you can see how amazing it is in just one trip. Sometimes you can get this butterfly there, one second. Oh, beautiful. So I've got a lot of really good photos today. Well, a lot of good opportunities. And I've been looking, I've been shooting quite high shutter speeds because it's sunny, F8, with because I know it's best quality, the teleconverter. I'm not sure, cropping in, the quality is there. I, I think I'm gonna lower my shutter speed to maybe a thousandth, or a thousandth, or 800. Just, even though I'm, I might not get one in focus, because of motion blur, I think the quality would just be better. Because for me, I have high expectations of wildlife photography using this kit. You know, like with a robin, I want to see all the feathers and the, the, the drops of water on the feathers and the texture. And you get closer than we can with our eyes, so. But I'll let you be the judge and see what you think of the photos. The cuckoo way over there. It just flew over. Even with the 400 on its own, it just can't acquire the focus very well. I managed to get some photos. 
most of the time they're out of focus but I had it great because it was coming flying directly towards me so I had a perfect line of sight that couldn't focus on it with the geese it's absolutely fine get beautiful looking photos okay I'm gonna go and tr over there and try and find the cuckoo I know it'll probably fly away or go to somewhere completely different but it's been a very successful day so I'm gonna keep going with it so these ducks and the sun's come out there's a duck right behind me there I'm not sure you can see it but making a lovely photo for me I hear the cuckoo. It's somewhere over there. Getting closer. Okay, I'm really close now. I'm gonna leave you there. Okay, so I didn't find the cuckoo. It was in further away than I thought. The sound over distances, over empty spaces, travels quite a lot. But that's okay. It's like fishing. You go for the experience and not for the catch. It's in those trees over there. I can try and get. It was. Got you, got you, got you, I got you. I think I've got you. Got something, it's very backlit. So I was just, I was just filmed that saying I didn't get the cookie. And I was just on the way back by the reed beds. And I, I was focused on the clouds behind it and then it seemed to find auto focus pretty well and just tracked it the whole way. I think I got some good photos. So there you go. So I've come into the wooded area and maybe one day I'll find an owl. And that's one of the reasons I've got the 400 4.5 in case it's low light. But I hope you enjoyed this journey with me today. It's been a lot more dramatic than I thought it would be, which is amazing, but it's great. I mean, I've got probably four to 5,000 bird photos on my computer. And I don't just do it to post it on Instagram or make YouTube videos. I know that's a nice bonus. It really is about the experience of being coming here and just doing it. I mean, if I did it for my camera, I'd still enjoy it. With the camera, it's a bonus. And you've seen the highs I can get um, if you manage to capture a rare bird. It truly is amazing. It gets the adrenaline. You know, I might not even do anything with those photos. I've took pictures of birds before, but you still get the same rush. And would you like to see more of these videos? I know we do a lot of gear reviews, um, but would you like to see more things like this? See you next time.